Fall is in the air for parts of the United States, so now it's time to look ahead to swings expected into this winter. This preliminary outlook will look at the main climate trend expected into the colder months, plus its possible impact on temperatures and precipitation. I'll also break down some other new musty data, so stick around for this full preliminary outlook. One Nation Weather. Let's open this video with a look at one factor that often impacts winter, water temperatures over the East Pacific Ocean. Notice the blues representative of cooler ocean conditions. Those are indicative of a La Nina trying to take hold. A La Nina climate pattern is one of three phases of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or INSO. INSO involves the constantly changing trade winds over the Pacific and how they affect water temperatures. For us in America, INSO typically impacts the evolution of winter jet streams, the big and important wind patterns making our weather move. The exact position of the jet streams can affect how warm you get or how cold and snowy it becomes. La Nina is expected to play a role in this winter's conditions. In a La Nina situation, the normal setup involves an active polar jet stream diving into the center of the nation. For temperatures, this usually causes an area of colder air to spill into a lot of the north. Zones below that jet stream flow usually stay on the other side of normal, with milder air more common in the south. In terms of precipitation trends, the warm zones further south have a tendency to be dry with La Nina conditions. Meanwhile, the northwest U.S. and Midwest are commonly wetter. This makes sense as the usual jet stream flow would aid in pulling moisture first from the Pacific, then off of the Gulf further east. Those overall La Nina trends are worth noting, but it has also been proven that the strength of those cooler La Nina waters affect impacts in the U.S. The overviews I just provided are for an average moderate La Nina. This winter is forecasted to be a weaker La Nina with only slightly anomalous water temps in the East Pacific. That means we need to look at any themes common from weak La Nina influences in the past to better understand what could be similar this year. This graphic from climate.gov shows recorded temperature trends during all types of La Nina winters of 1950 to 2017. While there was variability among the weaker years, in all cases a notable patch of below average temperatures can be seen. Most of the time this patch had a tendency to be around the north central US, expanding east frequently as well. One theme among precipitation patterns from the weak La Nina examples was, if anything, above average precipitation being common somewhere in the east. Some overlap in the above average precip could be seen year to year, particularly near the Ohio and Tennessee Valley regions. Those trends of cooler air sinking in and a patch or two of wetter times are definitely somewhat in line with the average La Nina. Those historical examples also show resemblance to an average in so neutral climate setup like the one shown on this graphic. Notice how neutral years tend to have slightly more expansive cooldowns than a typical La Nina. That might explain why the weak La Nina years had bigger cool anomalies as they were very close to being a neutral year. Regardless, these trends give the idea that winter 2025 to 2026 has a decent chance at involving big cooldowns as well as increased storminess for some spans. That's based on historical data, at least. Before we jump into other data regarding this winter and what it could look like, here's a shout out to the awesome provider of many maps used on this channel, Weatherbell. For a free trial to awesome weather model maps like the ones flying across your screen, click that link down in the description. Also, here's a quick reminder that if you're enjoying this video so far and want videos on storm systems this winter, go ahead and subscribe to this channel for accurate weather content. Now let's jump into a look at some seasonal model guidance perspectives on what might play out into this winter. Starting with the Can Sips guidance, it follows about as closely to a normal La Nina type winter as I've seen. For December through February, the Can Sips depicts temperatures leaning cooler over the northern third of the country. Elsewhere, above average temperatures are projected, particularly in the southwest. Recent CANSEPS precipitation guidance suggests that a lot of the Midwest and Ohio Valley could be wetter than average, right in line with the typical La Nina jet stream dips into that general region. Guidance such as the European seasonal modeling suggests the typical La Nina zones will have heightened precipitation as well. However, this guidance differs in terms of temperatures by showing a sweep of warmer than average temperatures dominating the winter. The European seasonal guidance isn't the only to do this, as other long-range forecasts from the CFS and NMME models show warmer possibly being the winning side of normal for the cold season. One point the warmer modeling leads me into is that 
La Nina or not, winters have tended to lean warmer overall in the recent decades. This climate.gov graphic shows temperature anomaly averages of entire La Nina winters from decades ago versus more recent events. Older La Ninas were almost always very cold up north. The colder than average anomalies have been less pronounced over the course of the last 10 La Ninas due to simply general warming conditions noted around the globe. Although milder conditions have been dominating modern winters, one effect seen in recent years can bring massive sweeping cooldowns to try and even things out. That is the polar vortex and its noteworthy presence. The polar vortex holds very frigid air near the North Pole over the course of each winter. Although it doesn't happen often, large atmospheric waves can disrupt the hold of this vortex and its position over the North Pole. This is often called sudden stratospheric warming and results in the pole warming while cold air gets forced south. This causes major mid-latitude storms and Arctic air that can expand while bringing significant effects. The winter of 2021 had such an event during a La Nina year, and this resulted in an outbreak of unusually cold temperatures for many in America. Although it wasn't a sudden stratospheric warming, a polar vortex shift during this previous January triggered a rare Arctic outbreak across the United States. The point is that variability out of the surface level and way up through the sky can also affect the way weeks and entire months shape out. The crazy thing is, what I've mentioned so far in this video are just some of the patterns affecting winter weather. With that being said, I want to go over my first official winter outlook for 2025 to 2026, starting with temperatures. Most guidance lines up to show warmer air at many points this winter across much of the United States. As a result, I have zones down south that are further from Canadian air, forecasted to end up warmer than average overall. Especially the southwest U.S. is expected to be above average in the temperature department. Further north, the variability of the weaker La Nina jet stream should result in more common cold shots, which might not dominate but could be significant at times. For now, expect around to below average temperatures as the average trend in that corridor. In terms of precipitation, the warmest zones are anticipated to remain dry zones down south. From California to the Carolinas, near normal to below normal rain and snow is currently most probable. On the flip side, I think this could turn out to be a near normal to wetter than normal winter for much of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northern Tier in general. That comes as an active jet stream has often led to such results in previous similar years setup wise. In terms of snow, could this mean more flakes for you than usual? I think snowfall trends and updated information will be for my next winter forecast right here on the channel. That's likely coming at some point around mid to late October. For now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this early forecast down below in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from and if you're now excited or not excited for the upcoming winter. By the way, I couldn't have even made this forecast without getting pointers from the Climate Prediction Center's current and previous outlooks or historical data from climate.gov. Here's a shout out to those sites where you'll find all kinds of data from winters of the past. With that being said, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss my next data-driven winter forecast or any other outlooks I post. Thanks for watching. God bless you. One nation weather.